uh, three. We as a theme, as a believers conference theme, or as a theme, yeah, for the upcoming conference, we have we have uh, uh, stated that we believe that uh, we believe it is God's word, God's will, and God's way. Come on, say God's word, <clears throat> God's will, and God's way. I tell you, the word of the Lord is the incorruptible seed of God. It is the revelation of God in written form as Jesus was the revelation of God in human form, according to St. Saint, Saint John, the first chapter and verse number 14. We believe that God's word is a blueprint. It is a road map. We believe, according to Psalms 119 and 105, that thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We believe, we believe, we believe, according to Psalms 107 and verse number 20, that the Lord sent his word to heal us. Amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. And we believe that God sends his word as a result to our troubles and our circumstances and our situations. As we begin to look at why God, God sends his word. Come on, say why God sends his word. Why God sends his word. Well, <clears throat> St. John, the uh, uh, first ninth chapter, verse number one through three. St. John, the ninth chapter, verse number one through three. The Bible said, and Jesus passed by, the, by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. Verse two said, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Verse three, Jesus answered, neither had this man sin, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. So we understand by that scripture that God sends his word so that God's works can be made manifest in our lives. God has a purpose for his word. Every one of us was created with purpose. If you know that, raise your hand and say, yes, I was created for a purpose of God. God had something in his mind when he created you. So watch this. God then, when he sends his word, he says to us, he has a general word or a general will for all mankind. He also has a specific will for individuals. He has general directions for the corporate body of Christ and specific directions for the individual members of that body. Just as all directions for the human body come from the head, then all directions from the body of Christ, both corporate and individual, come from Christ. Jesus is the head of the church. Jesus is the head of the church. All true ramas and leadings of the spirit will be in harmony with God's overall purposes and for the edification of the whole body of Christ. But just as the human head, just as the human head directs, give directions to the eye, so are not the same, the directions that the human head give to the eye are not the same directions that he would give to the ear. Christ's specific will and instructions for members and their ministries in the body are not all the same. They must be personalized. They must be personalized by individual application, by individual's assignment or individual's of purposes. The word of God is then personalized. Thus spoken, if you look at verse chapter 9, and we see what goes on here as Jesus walks up and signs this blind man. Jesus in verse number 4 of St. John 9 and 4 says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. He said, the night cometh when no man can work. And then in verse number 6, when he had thus spoken, when he had thus spoken, remember a specific word personalized for this man's situation. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle, and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. In verse 7, he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seen. The fact that God sent that word, and of course we know according to scripture that it sends his word to heal us. But no, it is not then a, a, 
a, uh, a pattern. It is not then a principle that if one is blind, that another should make mud pies and put it on a person's eyes and tell them to go wash in a specific pool called Siloam. That word was personalized, glory to God, personalized just for that man, just for his situation. Even though when we look at the Bible in St. Mark 8 chapter and verse number 22, we find a like situation, but not exactly alike. Where Jesus did not only heal a blind man, but the Bible said he literally spat in his eyes. He spat in his eyes. In verse, as you go on, it's not a revelation, nor is this a mandate, nor it is a principle that if one should come blind, that any of us should spit in their eyes. That was a personalized word. That was a prearranged word, especially for that person. Note, the man obeys the instruction. In fact, let, let, let's, go, let's look at St. Mark 8 and 22 just for a minute. Something just dropped in my mind. So let's look at this. In St. Mark, Mark 8 and 22, he coming to Bethsaida and they bring a blind man unto him and he besought him to touch him. And the blind man said, touch me. Wow. 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 That raises a question right there. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spat spit on his eyes he put his hands upon him and asked him if he saw out he wanted to know what do you see what can you see or can you see verse number 24 the bible said in verse 24 and he looked up and said i see men as trees walking i see men as trees walking verse 25 after that, he put his hands upon him, hands again upon him, upon his eyes, and made him look up, and he said he was restored and saw every man clearly. Now, here's amazing. Here's amazing. Because I, and, I, and it just dropped my mind. You know, actually, the man had a faith that said if Jesus touched him, if Jesus touched him, but Jesus did not put his hands upon him. He actually spat in, his eye, spat in his eyes. He spit in his eyes and did not touch him. As a result, one could say, as for not being touched, his faith would not allow him to see like God wanted him to see. Because his faith said, if I'm touched. That goes back to what we read in, Saint, in the book of St. in the book of St. Mark, the fifth chapter, where the Bible said that woman said, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. That's to tell me if she had not reached and got his garment, she would have left the presence of Jesus not being made whole. Glory to God. Glory to God. So if you notice, there are two things that went to, went to work here. And then somebody might question, well, when Jesus spit in his eyes, was it not enough power? Did Jesus not know? Did he miss God? Did he miss it? Was his power short, short circuited? Could he not do it? Was that the problem? I submit to you absolutely not. That was not the problem. In fact, by research, there's something called post-blind syndrome. That even if a person in the natural was born blind and they had some type of opera, uh, some type of surgical procedure to receive their sight, they would first, if seeing a tree, they would see leaves and they would see the trunk. And it'd be difficult for them to put it together to say, I see a tree. They would only see leaves and they would see trunk because part, partly because their vision would probably blur together. So what I believe that man saw when he looked the first time, he saw trees and he saw men. Glory to God. And those men and trees were standing around. So he said, I see men as trees. And what actually happened, a blurred vision. I, if your, my vision gets blurred, I see some Pastor Bennett as doubles. Maybe for a vision, but Jesus touched him the way he saw and the way he was expecting. He said, I see him like they ought to be now. It is not a principle, however, nor should it be a practice that in order to execute healing of a blind man that wants your spit. 